Greetings, fellow guitar travellers, it's Raymond J. Parker here with Mr. Roy Marsh back and we are going to be doing a session here on his alternate picking technique. And uh, yeah, there's some things I want to ask you. I want yeah. to I want to delve into your technique and uh, I want to find out all the juicy secrets. Ah, uh, do you have any juicy secrets? Uh, no. I've got juicy secrets but they're not to do with alternate picking. Don't ask. You don't want to know. There's some things you want to know but you don't want to know those things. So, here's my here's my, my first thing. Um, <clears throat> maybe maybe we could demonstrate for the ladies and gentlemen at home this kind of crazy right hand motion thing you've got when mm. you alternate pick. So can you can you show me like a, a tremolo pick or something like that? Uh, single note, single note tremolo will do. So that that kind of motion from the wrist, how how did you develop that, and and was it a point you became aware that you could do that? Because you know, I won't talk about myself. Me me me. That's a joke. Why why can a singer net not sing beyond the third note of a major scale? No. Do re me me me. <laughs> they can that never. Gets worse. I know. I know. Right. So but so. Yeah. The, so, for instance, you know, when, when I pick faster, I'm, I'm one of these elbow pickers when I'm picking fast, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, I physically can't get my wrist to do that, it won't do that. So when did you be, first became aware that, that your wrist <laughs> would in fact do that, and how did you develop it, and what did you do to develop it? Right, it was a conscious uh, decision to try and get as least movement as possible. So, all the big movements, uh, for some reason I found it quite cumbersome when I was changing strings to get it accurate. So I figured if I could bring that down to like small movements, the best way would be to try and imagine a nail being driven through my wrist on the guitar body and it just all coming from that part of uh, my, my body. But I did realise there was uh, aches and groans going on in the elbow and the upper shoulder department mm -hmm. um, because I was primarily playing with uh, the pick parallel to the string, right. which led on to the development of this pick at an angle. Right, right, okay, so, so but I mean, was it a thing that happened quickly? Did you develop that? I mean, was it something no. that, that, that you just you discovered you could do, or was it something that you really thought, okay, or what? Yeah, yeah it, it kind of it started out feeling natural. I mean, I, I started out with the, the Michelangelo thing, like we were talking about before, and it just, it just didn't, it wasn't it, accurate. It didn't let, work for me let, at all. Let, let me ask you a more tangential question then. Mm. Why, why did you want to, to, to be a fast picker? Was there something that you heard or something that you saw? You just thought, oh yes, I'll have that. Yeah, I just find it exciting. I just, I just find that the actual, the, the way it can describe um, something that is like in a rush to go somewhere. You can't really do that when you're playing two notes in a blues progression, you know. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that that's a, uh, there's nothing wrong with two notes in a blues progression. That's brilliant, you know, but. I just, uh, it's just another way to describe a, a feeling. Yeah, isn't no, it? no, I agree with you. But, but was it, um, oh, was it like a? Obviously, you say well, it's like an emotional connection. But was it also like like a like a technical challenge? Because, for instance, when I was trying to develop yeah. technique, there was a certain purity in trying to pursue the technique for its own sake. The first time, the first time I heard it, the first time I was conscious of like something, something going like the barrels of hell was in the the Warner, Warner Brothers. Uh, Cartoons, mm. the you know Carl Stalin would write like the violin parts for like the Roadrunner, but he was like you're on a chase. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I just think, bloody hell, like who's playing this? That's amazing. And it's just like it, it, I was just fascinated as a child what that was, but I always put it to the back of my mind thinking I'm just a guitarist. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not supposed to play that kind of stuff mm. until mm. Um, obviously people started to play like the Paganini stuff on. I like to kind of acoustic, and I was oh, like, "Oh, okay. you can't do that." Yeah, right. Okay, so it was. It was would you say that then you were sort of influenced by the the sort of the virtuoso movement of the nineteen eighties? Because that's certainly I was. I was, but I was more influenced as a child watching cartoons. Right, right. Okay. But that's that's what kind of really got to me, and it was. But I, I never thought when I was a kid I'll ever be able to do that on a guitar because I just thought that was meant for violins. Right. Yes. No. I I think. Uh, I've recounted this before, but mm. you, you know, I didn't even know that sort of thing was possible on an electric guitar. And mm. when I you know, saw someone play something fast for the first time, I was just like, what, well, you can do that? 
Yeah. You can do that? Well, yes, it's possible. It was a eureka moment, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it wasn't even a, for me at any rate, it wasn't a matter of, well, that's it's possible, but not for me. Yeah. It was like, it's possible, and I, I've got to learn how to do that. Yeah. yeah and there was sort of no question for me in my mind, I didn't even consider it for a second, you know, you know the impetuosity of youth that you, you just assume you're going to be able to do it. Yeah, I didn't for a second assume I wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. So when, when people ask you, how do you develop your technique, it's like, I didn't think about it. I didn't yeah, think just, about it. Mm, 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 mm. So would you say there was a conscious... The, <clears throat> there was there was a definite um, conscious uh, push and drive towards it. It was actually a friend. I mean, I was talking to earlier about like my friend Fiona. It was, and I would sit and practice for, you know, stupid amounts of hours a day, like twelve hours a day, and uh, it was constantly pushing yourself to the absolute limit of your potential. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very interesting time because some of the things that you couldn't do before became, mm -hmm. you know. It was like, oh my god, this this is actually possible. Yeah, and um, suddenly I can do this. Yeah, yeah. Instead of going like, I thought that was just meant for the, you know, the big guys, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the guys at the top of the, top of the tree. So um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was uh, quite quite something, quite a revelation when things started to open up to me, and the whole um, tremble thing, uh, became a reality, mm -hmm. but was something that could be controlled. Yes. As opposed to it just being like, you know, single string go like, you know. Well, indeed, indeed. I mean, if you listen to a lot of the rock players in the 80s, they, they had quite good tremolo picking, but mm. what was lacking was the, the synchronization from the other hand. So yeah. so maybe just that we can use that as a springboard to bounce along to the next thing. Mm. So so you've, you've, you've developed this kind of fairly insane wrist motion that enables you to pick extremely fast. Mm. So how did you actually then leverage that into being able to play something? So, so for instance, um, I certainly know that that when I teach alternate picking and a lot of the exercises I play are like single string synchronization things. Mm. So I mean, have you got some particular single string synchronization things that you you would use or you did use when you were developing it? Yeah, I mean, I said before I've got thousands of pages, all this kind of stuff, and the different combinations of notes that you can try. But I mean, I, initially I just started like just with four notes, starting with a downstroke, mm -hmm. uh, four notes per note. For for pick well, notes, well, the, the easiest this way, the easiest way to do this is, is just to show us, and if you don't mind, at least at least for my benefit, show me a bit yeah. slowly. So yeah, so it's just like um, four, four, and okay, next so thing. just just to just to interject and clarify, mm -hmm. you are um, talking about chromatic material here, four notes at, per the, string at the moment. At the moment, yeah, just as an exercise to try okay. and get the two things to connect, the left and right to connect. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, Let's, if you can show us that entire exercise slowly and then maybe you can sure. ramp it up a little bit. I didn't have a note in my mouth, I just pushed myself to the actual, the, the maximum potential I could. Right. I kept on pushing and kept on right. pushing right. until I felt I had both hands connected. Mm -hmm. But um, something I did consciously was because I could hear all the, the mush between the notes sometimes when I was picking, mm -hmm. I would get uh, the white noise on the radio and I would turn the radio up and I imagine a waterfall behind me. Right. And it somehow camouflaged all the other nonsense that was going on with the rattling of strings. Right, okay. Um, and I could actually turn the white noise down so I could actually hear it, each individual note played. So I could actually deal with the fact that I was playing it well. Right. Because initially it's quite sore. You're going, like, oh, that sounds pretty brutal. Uh -huh. well, this is, again, this is not directly linked to the synchronization issue, but mm. uh, what do you do about like muting and, and uh, you know muting the, the strings and the extraneous string noise? Because again, <laughs> well, for, well, of course you've got those mutes. My, my favourite. My yeah, you have, like, you have dampers on the neck, but, but also you do uh, some sort of muting with the right hand as no, well? No, none with the right hand. Right, okay. Um, the reason for that is I, I pick right back at the saddle, right, uh, where I can get most of the string tension. Uh -huh. uh, so I really have to have some kind of dampening so, going so, down. So, so those, those people that might not appreciate this, mm. um, why, why are you picking so far back? Uh, okay, so you get more string tension, so there's less flexibility in the string. It's taut. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no flexibility on the pick. Mm -hmm. So basically the less movement 
the faster things and the easier it is basically. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's, sure. Le it's less to to manage because when the strings going like this and your picks going like this, it's kind of hard to get the, the no, two no, things connected. I, I absolutely understand that. So I mean, how, how do you deal with the fact that obviously it's, it's I mean, uh, the, the the Spanish for this this sound back here is called metallico. Uh, you know, which basically means you know, it's a metallic sound, it's a very bright sound, or a trebly mm. sound. So, mm. do, you, do you find that impacts upon your tone, or do you need to EQ that out, or what would you do? Yeah, um, basically, if I'm not taking out the, the, the amp, I've got to take it out of what I'm using, so that's why really the pick is so thick. Right. Because if I had a really thin pick, it, it, would, just be, be, it, would, it would be unbearable. It would be unbearable, yes. take your head off. Yes, yes, I see that. Uh, uh, so, the pick being 9mm thick, Adds a lot of bass. Mm -hmm. Now, I know when we were just kind of chatting earlier on, you, you showed us some other uh, single string synchronization exercises. Mm -hmm. Could you have like four notes on a string and then three, and then two, and then eventually just one? Yeah. So, could you maybe show us those ones as well? Yeah, so you just start off again, like. Yeah, then mm -hmm. three. So, sort of jig time, mm -hmm. then march. Then. Yeah. Okay. And starting that with a down stroke to start, and then doing it with an up stroke. So, okay. you've got. Yeah. And that feels a bit strange when you just switch from a downstroke to an upstroke. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of important as well because you'll find odd groupings and when you're changing strings that'll feel a little bit disjointed. Mm -hmm. But when the muscle memory is there, it makes it a lot easier. There's, I mean, that kind of brings me on to the next thing about uh, what I describe as, as cross picking. Now, I don't know if this is the term that everyone uses to, to understand what, what I mean by this, but. There's, for me anyway, I don't know how you feel, there's, there's really two issues to contend with in alternate picking and that is just the basic synchronisation of the two hands. You know, for it to sound well articulated and coherent you need to have both hands working together at the same time. So you know, there's one plec from stroke and there's one articulated note. So, so achieving that in a single string is, I mean it's hard enough to do that on a single string, but it's nowhere near as difficult as when you start crossing over the strings. Now the way that I understand it or the way that I describe it is that you can either cross outside of the string or inside of the string. Mm -hmm. You know, an example would be, for instance, if I did a, a downstroke on the B string and then an upstroke on the E string, I would call that an outside cross yeah. because the plectrum is moving outside of the string. Mm -hmm. And you know, by the same token, if I played a downstroke on the high E, then an upstroke on the B, I would call this an inside cross mm -hmm. because the plectrum would be crossing on the inside. Now, for most players, and, and definitely this is true for me, there's some crosses which I find easier. So, for instance. Outside crosses I'm generally much better at. Anything involving an outside cross is fine. Inside crosses, with some exceptions, kind of quite odd exceptions, I find a lot trickier. And so any you know uh, passage or pattern or sequence which is mostly outside cross, I can play really quite well. Mm -hmm. But anything with an inside cross, I tend to, let's be honest, I tend to suck at it a bit. And if you ever you know really listen to a lot of the things I play when I play it, you know at my, my maximum speeds, they tend to be. Uh, you know, outside cross things. So, so my question is, how, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with those string crossing things? Or was it, do you, do you find one cross or the other more difficult? Or is it just become sort of, the, the, neither is a problem? No, that's a good question. It's um, when you're working with odd groupings of notes on each string, mm -hmm. um, starting say with the downstroke, mm -hmm. then you have to deal with the inside cross mm -hmm. you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically just drilling yourself in odd numbers, starting with a downstroke mm -hmm. on the string, so you have to actually physically get the muscle memory to do what you wanted to do. So but it's I found I found with the the micro um, movements that was a lot easier. All right, okay. Um, I, mean, I had le I had less movement, or less to think of when from the elbow. I did. Try with the elbow as well. It didn't work for me for long enough. So it works for you, but it didn't work for me. Well, I think I think um, it, obviously. In, in my own case, um, uh, it limits my top speed. I think that's fair to say because because it, you know it, it stands to reason that, that if your entire elbow is moving, that is definitely not as efficient as just this part, small part of your wrist is moving. Which is is why I can't pick as fast as Roy. That's the fundamental reason is because I can't move my wrist like that, but I can you know lock my arm on my elbow and move it fairly rapidly, but uh, not not to the same extent. Yeah. So so yeah. I think it's small movements definitely work yeah. better, especially when you're you're talking crossing over strings, it, mm -hmm. it helps. Mm -hmm. yeah. So have you got something that maybe you can show us that, that sort of demonstrates this, this cross? Um, some, so, so hopefully try, try and play something that's at least reasonably approachable or, yeah, or simple. Well, um, well, I'll just stick to the chromatic idea because it's a lot easier for the hands and the fingers to coordinate. Okay. So just like you say, inside, um, say it's three notes, okay? Starting on an upstroke, then downstroke. 
Okay. Yes. Right, so that, oh, so, sorry, you're starting with an up stroke or a down stroke? Yeah, up stroke. Right, so, so that's uh, inside cross now. Inside cross. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. or, or you could do it opposite. Like yeah, that, yeah. So. And I can see how that feels naturally a lot easier. So would you say you find the outside cross to be easier? It's six and a half, doesn't it, this right, stage? You don't, it doesn't. It doesn't really bother me that much because it's kind of, it's there now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Inside. So that's with an inside cross. That's inside cross, yeah. And, and, and outside? Yeah. And, and of the two, what would you say was, was honestly easier? I think inside for myself. Right, interesting, because it's definitely for Because I think it's easier because. I don't know, it just feels like you're closer to the next string. Right. With the, with the, with the outside cross, you're tra travelling over the, over the string, whereas you're kind of there next to the string. Yeah, it's, it's interesting that you say that because because my, my feeling about that is almost the complete reverse of that. Right. I always feel that if you, start, if you have a three note per string thing and you start with uh, an upstroke, mm -hmm. you've got up, down, up, right, mm -hmm. up, down, up, and the direction of the plectrum travel is towards the ceiling. Yeah, which yeah. means you'd have to bring the plectrum up over the string you just played and move it down to uh -huh. playing, you know, say in this case the G string, you'd mm -hmm. hit that with a down stroke, and then again the direction of plectrum travel would be away from the string you want to play yeah. next. So so it's very interesting that you see that you say that you find that easier because for me I find that a lot a lot more difficult. I found when I, I put the angled edge on the pick, okay, so with the the camber being there. With it being so long, and it, the pick being so thick, when I was on the inside note, say it's all up, down, up, this edge of the pick is actually quite close to the string. No, so, okay, I see. So it's kind of there. So you, you, think, you think possibly like the thickness or the size of the pick might have something to do with it? I think it's got a lot to do with mm, it. Yeah, okay. It's possibly why I find it a lot easier, mm. a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. No idea, I've never really thought about it until I started talking about it just now. It's quite interesting. Well, Breaking it apart. Well, well uh, you know, I, you know, like I said, we were having sort of general discussion earlier on about picking technique, I think the, the only issue that I have about trying to say to someone this is the way to do it, is that when you look at you know 10 great alternate pickers, some mm. of them have got extremely different picking techniques yeah. and yeah they all get great results, you know if you look at say Steve Morse's technique versus I don't know, say Vinnie Moore versus uh, Michelangelo or any other you know well known very fast, I'll do the older, very fast alternate picker you can think of and you say well what have they got in common and I think it's really hard to say you know, there's a magic formula. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's, there's some things you can say, you know, general statements about, you know, if you do this, it's unlikely it'll be good, and if you do this, it's more likely to be good. But things are so variable. I don't, I don't know, how do you feel about that? Do you feel that there is like a, do you feel there's, there's, a, there's a way you could get anybody to alternate pick fast, or is it just something that, <sighs> there needs to be a, a combination of factors that people actually need to have? I think, well, there's no, um, there's no magic wand. You know, it's, it's just down to hard practice and discovering yourself because we're all made up different mm -hmm. and we've all got like our own little kind of quirks that were things that we're good at and things that we're not. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes physically things that we're obviously going to be uh, exceptional at um, and those, those are just gifted to you. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just, just can do these things yes, easily, yes, sure. um, natural ability and all the rest of it. But I think, uh, well, that's the whole purpose of actually getting this pick design was to hopefully aid some people into making the, the function of that to make it easier mm -hmm. um, because let's face it, we've got another generation underneath us uh, coming up fast and furious and they really need as much help as they can get they, they don't need any sort of uh, kind of uh, hardships or blocks put in the way so I thought well you know if this can help somebody then it might be you know, if it's well, also well, certainly I mean, I'm, we are going to get onto the pick and I'm, I'm going to do we're going to do a separate video all about the pick mm -hmm. but so this is mainly just for us this is really just a chance for me to geek out on Roy's picking technique so uh, <laughs> there was an exercise you played earlier on, which was a chromatic thing, which was a sort of a, a six-note uh, per string thing. So can you show show us what that was? Uh, was I think that was. I think that was. The, I think I think the digital pattern was uh, four, three, two, one, two, one, and it was down a chromatic scale. Yeah. Um, I think. I think. No, I'm not going to play this. Oh, because, right, but so it, it would have been. Yeah, something yeah. of that nature. I got you, yeah. So, so maybe we can demo that. So let's, 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 let's do that slowly before we go to the face melting tempos. Just, <laughs> okay. just, just so we can see what's happening here. Yeah, so. Yeah. 
G string, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then D string, the ninth position, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then A string is 10th position, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then, uh, that's right, isn't it, yeah, and then 11th position, low E string, 4, 3, 2, 1, right, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, 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 so, so that's the, just the chromatic scale going down, that's all, yeah, that's all right, and the digital pattern you're putting inside is 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 1, 6 yards per string, yeah, yeah, all right, okay, yeah. okay. playing at that tempo. All right. Yeah. So yeah, it's just to get the you can do the odd number of notes in that as well. So instead of it being like one, two, three, four, five, six, you could just have one, two, three, four, five. Now what would that be then? Um so uh, Right, okay. So that would mean in that case then that the picking would be reversing every time you played it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so, so you won't be addressing the string with the same direction of strokes when you have an, an even number of notes per string. If you start with a down stroke, you're going to be addressing each string, each subsequent string with a down stroke. Um, if you start with an up stroke, it would be an up stroke. But if it's an odd number of notes per string, then the address of each string will reverse. It will be down stroke, then up stroke, then down stroke, then up stroke. And usually those are pretty tricky to play. All right, okay, so I've got that one. <laughs> 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 right, right. So can you show us that one? I'll try. <laughs> I'm not even trying that. <laughs> I'm not trying that one. Sorry. <laughs> I know what you're all going to say out there. I <laughs> shot it. You're right. I did. I, should, I totally shot it. There's no way. There's no way. I'm trying to play that. Okay. It feels awkward for the ring. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, just imagine. feels all kinds of wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit like, you know, being in a hotel room with Harvey Weinstein. It's all kinds of wrong. Uh, it's like running backwards. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, now I think if there's anything more I can sort of dredge out of this situation that I'm curious about. Mm. So, um, uh, is there any other sort of exercises or things that you would typically or habitually play that, 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 uh, that you know, that you, you use to, the, you, you either still do use or that you use to develop your, your, your technique? Anything that's, anything that's going from even to odd number per notes on crossing strings. Right, so for Because let's face it, you're not going to play something like a scale of six notes per, uh, three notes per string, you know, all the time. Well, I, you're gonna, you're gonna go that's, three. That, that's kind of been my career. <laughs> you, I mean, if you're, honestly, you know, you're not yourself, you're playing something musical or arpeggiated, it's gonna go maybe three, four, maybe one, then two, mm, then one. Mm -hmm. So the more combinations you have in your muscle memory, the easier things are going to be when it comes I mean, to I, I, Again, speaking for myself, anything that was, is kind of, uh, you know, four notes per string, three notes per string, I can alternate this fairly well. Two notes per string, some pentatonic things, yeah, but no one knows quick. But single single note, you know, one note per string, like in arpeggio with alternate picking, I've always found, you know, extremely difficult to play fast. Mm -hmm. So have you got some stuff like that? Have you got anything like well, that? Let's just say, uh, let's take a combination of my head, it was like uh, three, uh -huh. then one, then two, three, four, five, then one. Right, but in terms of uh, no, in terms of notes on each string, it's three notes on a string, then one note on a string, then three notes on a string. But you're yeah. just repeating some of those notes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Again, I'll be able to play this. But you want to show me what you're playing now? Yeah. So it's just basically like a, a C, C major scale. So. Yeah, 
a, a sound on an F. Yeah, so an F. So this is like a, like F major 9 or something like that. Yeah. Alright, so you, you, you what you got then? Flip what you got? Alright, okay. I just know right away that I would find that really hard to turn it pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. But the more combinations you have like that, you know, obviously the better. Oh, sure. yeah, so, 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 so can we, can we give, a, give that a go to monster this, <laughs> this mega table? Very, very tricky. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, I would think, uh, what was it? Somebody said, um, that there's no point in doing that because you, you can do all the other kind of types of pick and sweep and all the rest of it. Well, and they have a point. Yeah, they, they have a point. Do. But it's, um, it's just for the sound of it. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I think the, the the thing is that if I was going to play something like that, yeah, I, I would almost certainly do it with legato, you mm. know. But that's only because I can't alternate pick it, or yeah. not not at that tempo, or I might try and sweep it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not like it's a, it's um it's a must have in the arsenal, but it's kind of it's good to have it if you're looking for that kind of sound. Well, Although I wouldn't have, what, I mean, do you really want to spend two months of your life to be able to do that? Well, you really, really did. We, that, I kind of did, yeah, but I mean, that was uh, for what reason? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> other than just insanity. Because, I mean, it's just because it's. Uh, I don't, does does there need to be a reason? No, I don't suppose there does. No, so. I, mean, I uh, like the sound of it. Well, oh, there you go. That's so, that's as good a reason as any. Right. So shall 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 we? Let's let's teach them. Let's teach them this riff. Do you want to teach them it? Oh, you go. Oh right, you should. You're, right. you're, you're the professional well, teacher here. Uh, well, yeah. Right, really. All right. So the thing he's playing here is it's basically an F major nine arpeggio with some passing tones. So it's kind of like a Frankensteinian combination of partly scale, partly arpeggio. So uh, the notes we've got here: F, G, A, then to C, then E, F, G. So in terms of its relationship to F, we've got uh, root, second or nine. Major third, perfect fifth, major seventh, root again and ninth. All right, so let's talk about digitation. Digitation is really simple. Fingers one, two, four, two, one, two, four. Easy peasy, right? Um, give you the verbal tab then. So we're on A8, A10, A12. That's the fingers one, two, and four. Is that the way you're fingering it? Sorry? You're fingering one, two, four? Yep. Yeah, right, okay. And do you do, just as a matter of an aside here, do you normally do those intervals with fingers one, two, four? Because I know some people use. One, three, four. Do you have like a uh, five yeah. finger No, I definitely do use the second finger yes. so, so I can have the. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right, so anyway, so uh, A, 8, 10, 12, and then we're on to D10 with the second finger, and then we're on G9, G10, G12, fingers 1, 2, 4. So that's the only notes which are in it, and all you're going to be doing is just looking at around and around, I guess. Yep. <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm play this as, the, as quick as I can play it. Bearing in mind, I've not played the guitar much in the last couple of, couple of months due to other things, right? But but still, still, I would say I could maybe manage that. And I find that phenomenally hard to alternate pick. You know? I mean, yeah, legato would be a bit better, and you know, obviously if you're sort of practiced it up a little bit, you get it fairly rapidly. But but that sort of thing, that's just crap, it was mine. Well, that's, right. what, that's what you're geared towards, so it's, so it's basically just like having the muscle memory to be able to appreciate when you're crossing the strings, you might end up having to go between and over. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time I find myself, I would just go, oh, I'm just going to do the in-between thing, and I'm going to stick with that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, really, is that a cop-out to myself? Right. And I thought, well, I would like that sound with all of it. And it wasn't really me that, <laughs> that uh, pushed me into that. It was. My pal was telling you about when we used to like Yes, them. yes, yes. But, but can you do this? And I'm like, right. no, oh, no. But, like, but I can, you bastard, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to have to like sit and try and do this and nail this now. So as I was saying, when you have someone else to fire off, yeah, it really helps to yeah, kind of sure. push things along. So. Okay, well, I think as a sort of a, a bit of an insight into some of the things that Roy does, get that crazy, crazy right hand going. Now that's uh, that'll do for this video. Um, we're going to do a little video about. Um, uh, the, the, the plectrum that Roy's had to develop, this customised plectrum. Yep. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, 
am I am honestly getting him to dig his own grave and then you know I'm going to bludgeon him to death with his own guitar because there's no way that someone with a picking technique that good should be allowed to live alright <laughs> thank you very much and uh, yeah we'll see you in the next video it's all about his plectrum so till then farewell see us.